Welcome back to Secret Weapons. My name is Mark Johnston. If this is your first time here, this is a YouTube channel where we do gear, demos, and reviews, as well as studio tips and tricks for leveling up your writing, playing, and production from the perspective of a guitar player working out of a home studio. If that's the kind of thing that appeals to you, I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and stick around for future videos. Today we are taking a look at The Paragraphs 2 by Von Gon. I've said for a long time that ambient music is not about reverb. Getting great ambient guitar tone, getting great ambient tone on any instrument has very little to do with your reverb mix or the regeneration of your delay repeats and much more to do with how you craft the timbre, attack, decay, and tonality of the dry signal itself. Finding creative ways to kind of open a filter around the note being played, finding ways to either accentuate or completely obfuscate the transients on the attack of your guitar can have such a heavier impact on creating dreamy movement for ambient compositions and soundscaping than an 80% mix and a 10 second decay on a reverb ever could. And the new iteration of Paragraphs by Von Gon here really calls into high relief how much I believe in all of those tenants. As you heard on that intro song, this is one of the most gentle sounding swirly ambient devices I've covered on this channel in a while. And we've covered some really big reverbs recently. So this thing can be a little bit of a beast to get your head around if you are new to it. So let's go ahead and talk about what Paragraphs 2 is from very, very basic levels and expand outward. At its very core, Paragraphs 2 is a resonant low pass filter. You have a frequency cutoff knob right here that runs from 20 hertz up to 12k and you have a resonance control that will kind of increase the severity of that resonant peak at the frequency cutoff point that uh, as you get up into higher values will actually self oscillate on its own. And to its credit and at its core it is a very good sounding low pass filter. I don't think all low pass filters are built the same and this has a really, really beautiful sweep to it, and that's in no small part due to how well-tuned that resonance is. You have no control over the width of the cue on that resonant peak at your cutoff point, but it is well-tuned, musical, in a way that doesn't feel peaky or nasally or awkward. I think that the frequency and the resonance play together very, very nicely. But this thing is so much more than just a resonant low pass filter. Beyond being stereo in and out, having MIDI input and expression and control voltage input, you also have a couple of internal ways to create movement and motion, both in terms of a stereo field and the frequency itself. And that envelope can be set in three different ways with a sensitivity control. Effectively, you have your envelope that can be set as positive or negative modulation, basically opening or closing the filter based on your playing, and then the sensitivity determines how much signal needs to pass into the signal to activate that envelope itself. Once the envelope is activated, you have three different ways of modulating the pedal. Those three modes will be toggled through using this little button on the left side and activating one of these three lights in follower mode, trigger mode, or cycle mode. Follower is going to be a straight up envelope follower that smoothly and naturally follows your playing dynamics. You set the intensity of that envelope, you set the rise and the fall kind of slope shapes and times, and then the sensitivity to kind of coincide with your playing. And then you just play your instrument and the envelope will kind of open and close based on your dynamics at the speed you have set those rise and fall controls. In trigger mode, by passing over that sensitivity threshold, it will trigger one playthrough of your envelope shape. So at whatever speed and slope your rise and fall are set and with whatever intensity the envelope is set to either positively or negatively impact the filter's position, once you cross over that sensitivity threshold in trigger mode, it will run that envelope a single time. And third, you have cycle, which basically allows you to set those kind of parameters, the rise speed and the fall speed, as well as the envelope amount, and it will just play it continuously on its own, allowing you to kind of have constant modulation running, opening and closing that filter. And if you're somebody like me that doesn't really love the idea of a very static and predictable waveform running on your signal at all times, like that cycle would imply, there are ways to amend that as well. And that is because you also have an LFO system in the middle of the pedal here with a rate and a depth control, which is inactive at noon, but counterclockwise from noon will give you a predictable sine wave on the LFO. 
and north of noon or clockwise, you will have access to a random LFO depth control with an LFO rate that can go from incredibly slow or 0.1 hertz per cycle all the way up to 30 hertz or incredibly fast and jittery. In mono, this can be used to apply additional movement to that filter behavior on top of the cycle the envelope is running at already. But where the real magic in this pedal exists is if you're running this in stereo, that LFO system is used to basically offset the polarity of the filter on the left and right channels, giving you sweeping motion from left to right as the two different sides of the filter open and close at different times. And when we talk about this as an effective ambient tool, this is what I'm talking about. I tracked all of the guitars on that intro song basically in mono. We wired up the pedal board with the paragraphs in mono, ran it into my Benson Monarch, and then dual mic'd it with a 57 and a Royer 121, but they're not panned out from each other. They are a mono blend of two microphones. And then we just parked those different mono guitar tracks in our mix across the stereo field, but they are effectively mono guitars playing into that mix. But what I did was mix those guitars down to a guitar bus and then reamp that guitar bus through the paragraphs in parallel in stereo with that system set up so that even though you're hearing a mono guitar pan center right playing with that filter opening and closing in the background that guitar as well as any other guitars being played at the time are being kind of swirled through a stereo image with a separate filter opening and closing creating just massive amounts of kind of movement and swirling dynamics that adds more ambience you could ever hope to get out of just adding reverb. And it's worth noting that there is almost no reverb on that track anyways. We are using the Maris Mercury 7, but we have Decay set moderately short and we have mix really low, like 10% on any of those guitars, and it's not even on for half of them. And so clearly this thing sounds excellent as a mono inline on your pedal board solution for creating interesting dynamics for your playing, but all of these additional tools in it and the fact that you can set it up for line level signals make it an incredible studio tool as well. Not only for reamping drums like you heard on that song, but also I played a bunch of Moog synth bass in my DAW for the bass on that track. And what we did was just reamped all of that bass with no movement on the built-in filter through the filter system on the paragraphs. It is a tactile way to take digital static instruments as well as your guitar and imbue them with either intentional, hand-controlled, or self-propelling motion and movement, both in terms of the filter itself and the stereo spread. So let's go ahead and get to our sound samples. I wanna make use of the guitar for this context, but I also wanna make sure that we are really taking advantage of the stereo field that Paragraphs offers. So the way that we're going to wire this up is we're going to take my pedal board, run it into my amplifier, and then in the preamps going into our DAW, we're gonna take this thing and run it in a mono to stereo arrangement so that you can hear how even a mono guitar going in can be imbued with a bunch of additional space and movement across the stereo field when you want it. Let's give this thing so a So as listen. always, before we get into our sound samples, let's talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Fender Johnny Marr Signature Jaguar into the Benson Germanium Boost and the Benson Monarch Plus. We are going out to the Universal Audio Oxbox and into our preamps, which are a Warm Audio WA273-1073 style preamp. It has an effects loop built into the preamp, and that is where we have the mono input going to the paragraphs two, with stereo returns going to the two outputs of that 1073, and then out to our DAW, which is Universal Audio's Luna. Von Gun filter disengaged. This is what our dry tone sounds like. So just as we talked through it in the uh, kind of review portion of the video, we're gonna go ahead and walk through paragraphs, breaking it down into kind of its simplest parts and working out from there. So let's start by taking a look at that frequency control by itself. straightforward. 
Uh, let's go ahead and bring in that resonance. So the resonance will increase the Q on that frequency control, but it also has a somewhat subtractive element to it on the other side of the curve. So as you will hear, if we dial it back to something like right here, Hear that you get more of that swooshing sound when you move the frequency than when it's totally uh, at zero. That's that kind of very mogi synth sounding style resonant frequency, which is really, really cool. But if you notice something else there, uh, you actually get a little bit of that subtractive element in that frequency uh, when you've got that resonance turned up. So you can actually use this to carve out a little bit of the low end as well and create a more targeted filter sweep with this. and it will get into self-oscillation as you kind of crank up towards 100%. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how that envelope system works. As you can see, as we play, that sensitivity light uh, begins to kind of like brighten up. And so you have rise, fall, and an envelope amount right here. Uh, the way that you set that will determine the movement of the frequency control when you're in follower mode. But the frequency basically is set as your, essentially your floor. The most close that the frequency is capable of being at the low pass filter will only close to where you set it here. And then the envelope amount will determine how far open it will go from there. So let's take it to incredibly fast and less sensitive. Wherever that floor is, that's as closed as that envelope can close down to. So if you take it to zero, and have the envelope completely open. We have sensitivity low, so let's turn that sensitivity nice and high for the purposes of this. But that envelope will only open as far as you have it set on here. So think of the envelope as the other side of this sweep. So if you have frequency set down at 20 hertz and you have envelope at full strength, it can open all the way to 12K. But if you take it about halfway back, it will now only open to about 1.2 kilohertz. No matter how high you have that sensitivity, it is just the thing that, to tell, that tells the envelope how far to open. So yeah, so if you've got wide open with the envelope right there, and you roll it to there, now it only opens to that point in the frequency, so So yeah, so right about 1.2 right there. And that envelope strength system right there can be really, really useful for determining 
uh, how much brightness you want coming through in your signal. So like you have this envelope system set up to kind of follow your playing dynamics. So you want it to always be a little bit open, but you don't want your kind of like really bright moments in that playing. You don't want all of that treble to kind of come through. You want something really mellow. What you do is you sense your frequency nice and low so that your low point can be nice and like closed. And then you set the, the strength of that envelope so that it can only open to somewhere in that like 1.2 to 3.9 kilohertz range. Furthermore, if you want to have those filters really gently follow you around, you can set your rise time and your fall time to be very, very slow. But it's worth noting that if you're doing the kind of thing that I like to do with a pedal like this, which is find effective ways to kill your pick attack. A slow fall, a like a very slow fall time will mean that when you start your next pick attack, the filter is still open from your previous movement. open up the filter all the way so that we can hear a lot of detail in that. If you get a fast drop off like that, it will give you the ability to kind of reset more quickly so that filter will have time to reopen on you every time. which can be incredibly handy for kind of dynamic, low pass filtered, uh, kind of like auto swells. Versus. Because we're just not giving time enough for that envelope to close back up. As you decrease that envelope strength, you go into the kind of like negative feedback of that envelope, which is a situation in which uh, your playing will actually close the, uh, the filter. So now you have your, uh, let's take that sensitivity way down so it's harder for us to close and set these to be really slow. This is now going to be your maximum value. And it closes down based on your playing dynamics. This is setting the floor south of your, your filter control. And that is the behavior of this envelope control. Let's go back over to the kind of positive feedback side of it. 
uh, and give a couple more kind of like example listens. So obviously we've been playing with a lot of very slow moving stuff, but one of the one of my favorite things from that intro song was that guitar part that kind of did the. where we basically had the frequency completely closed and the envelope set up so that every single note had no attack to it. Which in a ambient context with delay after it getting a little bit more rhythmic structure and everything and a bit more kind of compression and everything else creates a really interesting And again, that sensitivity is crucial in figuring out how far and how long you want that to be open for. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other envelope modes. We've been in follower so far, which is an effective way of kind of being able to showcase how this thing responds to your playing and to give it controlled feedback on how these parameters are going to operate. But you also have the ability to kind of set something like a filter that's a little bit open all the time with a decent amount of strength with less sensitivity. That's a And so now let's jump over to Trigger, which will basically allow you to take the settings that we have just kind of dialed in and set it up so that whenever you cross the threshold, it runs that envelope a single time. great for a version of this where the filter is not constantly moving in response to your playing, but instead allows you to set a, set a sensitivity threshold point where you can play with intention that will create a little blip in your playing. Uh, it's also a great opportunity for that kind of like negative modulation system where you can leave it a little bit more open. Yes, it makes for some really interesting movement opportunities here uh, where, you, where you only want those kind of like motions to happen occasionally. Triggered mode is a really interesting approach. Uh, and then, of course, you have cycle, where it just kind of is always operating. And allows you to create these like interesting asymmetrical waveforms for it.
is the envelope system. Let's go ahead and take a look at the LFO system and how it creates uh, kind of all of the best motion in this device. So we have all of these systems kind of working in our favor right now. Let's go back to follower, sensor, set our sensitivity nice and high and give ourselves like a really nice kind of bit of mo motion with our filter. this LFO and start increasing the depth in a predictable left to right way. subtle amounts of left to right. take a more unpredictable side by going north of noon on that depth control and giving yourself some random LFO. brings in the value of your mix control. This doesn't have to be just a full speed filter opening and closing at all times. By bringing in that mix control, you can do a couple of things, namely giving yourself a kind of center channel amount of focus. While still letting those stereo, spe those stereo spaces swirl around. as well.
which in the other modes has value as well. You can use that for that consistent cycling, or you can set it in that trigger mode where you just will have sudden kind of bursts of resonant filter roll through your signal as well. And of course, this frequency control can be uh, controlled via expression or CV by hooking up either an external uh, device and or just an expression pedal to be able to kind of sweep through that frequency whenever you want. And you have MIDI as well. This thing is pretty comprehensive in a lot of very cool ways.